hello friends and welcome back to my channel today we are mixing this wonderful light english red from my lucas palette with other colors primary and secondary of this lucas uh, watercolor set and uh, let's see what uh, surprising colors we will get by mixing this uh, English red with some other colors. Stay with me. Let's start from primary colors. I will take some English red and I will mix it with some uh, lemon yellow. The yellow gives immediately some light to this English red. Okay, so we get some light, uh, luminous brick color. I'll try more intense. Let's go now to red, the second primary color. So my red is a red, I will choose Lucas red which is a permanent red, typical primary color here. It uh, accentuates the brick location, it's even more brick. Okay. And this was with the uh, red you know, we get some interesting warm pinkish tones and some deep uh, reddish brick that compared to the original, the original is slightly colder, so it makes it warmer. Let's go to blue now. I'll pick some um, ultramarine. This is the original. So you see, it uh, immediately, immediately mutes it down. It desaturates the blue to a nice uh, muted blue. Let's add some more. Here it has a purple undertone. A muted brown. And I pick uh, Indian yellow, a very warm yellow. You see, Indian yellow, it's a warm yellow. Let's see what it gives. I think that I would like to reach a sort of quinacridone gold. Let's see, more yellow. even more yellow because it's very staining the English red. And now a lot of English red. Now let's go with yellow ochre. This is an interesting color.
Strand now with the pink. I would like to try an opera rose. Here we have the genuine rose, which is um, basically an opera rose. Here, you see? Opera rose against my English red. Some English red. Mm, yes, a rose, a slightly rose undertone. I will apply more opera rose. This is a very nice dark peachy color. Very beautiful. Last but not least, I want to try with the phthalo green. Okay, phthalo green is a cold, pure, single pigment green. It goes uh, to a dark brown, look, a dark, cold brown. Now more green. Mm, this is a beautiful muted green. It saturates the green beautifully. Mm, almost, it's almost a burnt sienna. This is a lovely combination. Let's uh, let's wait until my swatch is dry. Perfect. Now the swatches are dry, and we can draw some considerations. First of all, I suggest to everyone to play with the swatches and mixes when uh, you have a creative block or you may be bored because uh, you get some very unexpected results. Let's start from the last one, which is on top of tallow green. Look from, look how many shades uh, um, of green you can get with a simple addition of one single color. You get some very muted, interesting greens, an olive green or even a dark brown a dark brown is uh, unexpected actually this is a colder brown almost a uh, raw amber raw amber and this is almost a burnt van dyke brown and but you also get uh, an olive green if you add i think lemon yellow to this uh, muted green you get a, a beautiful sap green hue so it's worth trying mixing three colors next time if you add lemon yellow, you get this uh, subtle, warm, soft uh, ochre, a peach ochre that you can use for buildings, for instance, or for skies. And especially these two are wonderful. This is great for bricks, uh, for adding variety to your bricks. When you have a brick wall, uh, there is no one brick like the other, especially if it is an old wall. So you can add a hint of lemon yellow to your light red, um, English red, to increase the color variety and to get some uh, washed away bricks. Let's add some permanent red. This is a very primary, warm, deep red. And... Uh, Yes, immediately. This is a bit artificial. I would never use this straight from the palette um, unless I really need it. And you immediately desaturate your red and you get uh, a lovely desaturated, much more organic red. Uh, you add warmth uh, to your English red, you just turn it down a little and uh, in um, light washes it's great for floras. Look at this peachy tone. But what I find interesting, especially this um, desaturated red, really interesting. With blue, ultramarine blue, you get some very interesting greys with a purple undertone. So um, if you add only a hint of English red, you just desaturate your blue, which is always an interesting operation. If you use ultramarine as it is, it's a bit artificial, but if you add a hint of this color, you immediately get an interesting hue 
which is much more natural and organic, something that you can really find in nature, in florals, or in the sea. Look at uh, this gray. This gray almost has a yellow undertone. I don't know where it comes from, but it has a lovely color separation because uh, the ultramarine is a granulating color. Immediately when you mix uh, two granulating colors, you get color separation, which is a very interesting effect. Here also the purple is interesting, but even the hues uh, where the brick is prevailing, it has an interesting gray undertone which tones it down and makes it more natural and pleasing to the eye. Now, one of my favorite is uh, the mix with Indian yellow. Once again, we get some peachy, um, some peachy mixes as in uh, lemon yellow, but they are more intense, the warmer, they are very soft, they're very interesting. You have um, what we call in Italian terracotta. Terracotta is a very interesting color that uh, you can use for buildings and bricks, uh, but especially for buildings, uh, Mediterranean buildings, and um, uh, you get very interesting uh, mixes. With yellow ochre, you get a sort of gold. So if you add just a hint of English red to yellow ochre, you make it golden. And you have this um, golden ochre that if you don't have a golden ochre in your palette, you know how to produce it with just uh, the addition of this English red. And now the opera rose. Opera rose, uh, it's a fugitive color, so I don't use it so much, but um, if you just uh, sketch in a sketchbook, you don't have to hang uh, your works or sell your works. Look at uh, how interesting the mixes are. You get some uh, deep warm uh, rose uh, and uh, you get some uh, colors that once again are very interesting for buildings. Uh, many buildings in Italy have this rose, warm rose uh, hue holds true for the whole Mediterranean area for the south of France. You, you can find many houses with this uh, range of shades. And uh, it also can help to make the English red, which is by nature a bit opaque. It makes it more transparent uh, if you just add a hint of opera rose. Mm, you can have a lot of fun with this type of mixes. So maybe you can let me know in the comments uh, if um, you have tried mixing this color as well. And uh, I'd love to hear from you what is your experience in mixing English Red, which is, as you know, made with PR 101, one of my favorite pigments. Thanks a lot for having watched this video with me and do not uh, hesitate to like and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss my next video. Ciao from Italy!